Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today's project is a little funky. <laughs> this tutorial is, um, this was commissioned, so it's to make a photo backdrop. So it's for a little baby that's turning one. His name is Matthew, and they wanted to do the sky's the limit. So this is all going on a wall, and then he's gonna, with his toy airplane, he's gonna be kind of sitting in front of it, so you can see that behind him. He's gonna be plopped down at the bottom. So, but I wanted to show you like how to create something like this. I know this is very specific, but I think it might still answer some of the questions that you may have or you may run into. So the thing with doing wall items is first, measure how much, like how big you wanna do your thing. So on this one, um, because I didn't meet with the client in person, I what I did was I gave them an acrylic sign. So one of those big acrylic signs that you do for weddings, like welcome to our wedding, is usually it's 20 by 30. So what I did was I took the shape, went and got a square, because we need to know how big everything should be, right? So let's do this first. So let's make this square, unlock it, and we're gonna change the width to uh, 20 by, oops, 20 by 30. No, I actually want it the other way. I want it 30 by 20. So this is kind of how big my back, my background is, right? So what I'm going to do is arrange, send it to the back, and then also make it just a lighter color so we're not, so it's not so crazy dark. Okay, actually maybe even lighter than that. Okay, so here's our background. We want clouds, we want the words. So now we can resize everything appropriately. Now with the words, I definitely recommend doing um, at least two layers because the back layer, the offset, will um, attach everything. So this is already cursive, so it's okay, but if you see the word limit, the L is by itself, but the offset will give you the whole word connected together and in this case i actually did three layers and it looks like this i know it's kind of hard to see but it's so pretty so what you want to do is you want to do um, dark light dark so in the back because i knew it was going to be a light gray white ish wall uh, we ended up with a blue offset the blue is the biggest offset then it was white glitter cardstock with silver HTV on top. And the reason why I opted for the HTV is that um, it was gonna be the thinnest cut because it's the one on top. That's one reason. Two, it's just easier to handle. Like um, you have the S isn't connected here. Um, the L isn't connected. I just, it's just easier to do it that way. And then also you get this um, effect of sort of like a um, foil so it looks really pretty and expensive so that's I, I love using HTV on cardstock for that reason so I'm gonna show you again that's what that looks like now when you're doing cl clouds what I would recommend is doing clusters of them and this would go for almost anything like whether you're doing butterflies um, anything that goes in the background you sort of want to do clusters of them like three is a good number five is a good number in this case I used both I use a, it's five sets of clouds with most of them being three this is the only two because I wanted to mix it up I also want to you want to give it different uh, shapes and sizes so that it doesn't look so uniform so in this case for the clouds all you do is you go into images and type in cloud and you'll see we have so many to choose from. So even this one looks kind of funky, you're like, that's not a good cloud. But when it's in a cluster of clouds, it just looks more, I, I don't wanna use the word authentic because they're still cartoonish clouds, but that's kind of what it is, right? So like just click on a bunch of them, get them in there. This one, we can get rid of the face, so it doesn't really matter. You just kind of want a cluster of clouds. Now. 
it's up to you whether or not you like this like I personally don't like anything with a flat like for clouds I don't like it to have a flat bottom I would rather have something like this um, maybe even this cloud we can get rid of the word cloud that's not a problem um, and you can see I'm pulling in a lot right I like this one maybe even this one so I'm going to insert all those images and I'm going to show you how to clean them up now the words I did that in Inkscape so I will take you on a tour of Inkscape to create that offset okay so all of these are coming in on this corner over here so I want to just grab all of this and move it over a little bit I'm gonna move it out of the way for now I'm gonna show you how to do these clouds okay so when you have a cloud that's already um, altered and you want to make some changes to it my first move is to look if contour is available and I'm gonna move my face for a second sorry so contour is at the bottom right here contour is an amazing tool what it does is anything that is enclosed you can easily remove it so contour is available let's click on contour so you can easily get rid of the smile so I clicked on the smile right look at my cloud now my cloud only has two eyes left right let's go back to contour you can hide all it will leave just one thing it will always leave the top item up here it has to leave something even though we're saying hide all because if you hit everything it would literally disappear right so hide all means hide everything but one item and there's our cloud okay this one with the layers I want to show you this you want to ungroup it we don't want all the layers because that's going to give you too much repetition but the layers is good because if you wanted an offset for some reason you have an offset here right or you can put it slightly over and it gives you a different offset but all you do is you ungroup it to get your different layers I'm going to get rid of this for now and I'm going to show you the next one this one now if we're trying to recreate the sky's the limit obviously it was not so on the cutesy side so we want to get rid of the faces there's an easier way to get rid of the faces too depending on what you see so I'm going to move myself down so that you can see what this panel looks like I always like to look over here on the right hand side panel because it tells you what comprises of the image right so you have um, the cheeks are two it's you have a cutout with a full circle behind it so it gives you two different colors of the cheeks I know you can't see it because we're only at 50% here but let's go to a hundred so you can see the clouds there it is two different colors but we don't want that right so on the right hand side panel you can click on this hit the shift key click on everything that you don't want and you see it's starting to highlight right so we know that right now it's a little bit slow though <laughs> the third one just clicked here's my fourth one and it's taking a while just hit the delete button cheeks are gone <laughs> um, now what's funny is okay so the eye I was looking for the eyes and the eyelashes but it looks like it's just a cutout so it's the color is coming from the back side so again um, we can ungroup this for now we can go to this top cloud and go to contour and you can see we can get rid of the eyebrows or the eyelashes now there's two ways you can do it on the panel over here or over here you can click on the actual picture now when you see anything but a hundred percent just go over here and click on the number and it brings you to a hundred percent so now this um, I don't know what you want to call it this square is active so I can click on things to remove it so I'm clicking on this it's gonna be gone I'm gonna click on the eyebrows or the eyelashes and the mouth okay or I could have clicked on it over here you can do it either way but now look at my cloud beautiful all done right so that's how you um, that's how you alter these clouds let's look at this one this one's the same thing contour is available I know my face is where contour is but click on contour and we can just click hide all 
There is my cloud without the word cloud. Of course, you want this to be probably white. And then all these clouds are good. So what you want to do is, for instance, if you like these two clouds to go together, right? Like that, let's say. So group these two together because what will happen is they'll move as one. And then what you do is you bring it over to your actual image. So I'm gonna scroll, zoom out for a second so that we can see this. Okay, so you bring the cloud over and sizing wise, it's actually pretty, pretty good compared to everything else, right? but you can then resize it here and it will resize together because you want that. You already like these two as a pair. Now they're going to stay relative to each other in proportion and you can, that's how I would do it. So, um, and then of course you wanna change the clouds to white. Okay, um, let's see, everything else is, is basically an offset. Um, this plane is not, but I'll show you a plane. So when you go into images, let's just pick a plane from here because that one was a bot SVG file. But I want to show you how you change the colors and how you go about doing that. So let's find one that will give us those options. So I think this one's a, um, is this print and cut? Let's insert this one. Okay, so here we go. Now, I don't know if, if you caught that. I wasn't sure if this was a print and cut file or an SVG file. It is an SVG file because you can see all the different items. It says cut, so I can make it bigger. And then you can start and you can go in and start making changes. I don't want this to be yellow. I want this to be more gray. Um, and I don't want that to be red, so I'm gonna click on the red item and I'm gonna make it um, maybe a dark blue. And then I don't want the inside to look like it's light blue, I want the windows to look an even lighter shade of silver. You know, so you can streamline it there, right? So you can make that all, all of that like that. Um, now, this back image, so you have one big image that everything is layered on top, which is perfect. If you didn't have that, what I would do is I would duplicate it because remember, this is going on a wall. You don't want the airplane to be in five pieces and then trying to tape it to the wall in the right place, right? You want the plane to be one item that you're gonna tape on the wall. So. If you don't have a full back image, what I would do is I would duplicate the, the thing and then just weld it. That way, all these other pieces will go on top. That's how I would do it, okay? So let's delete that. You have your plane, you can type out a font and you can add that as adhesive on the side like I did with Matthew. So the only thing left is the offset and resizing it, right? This plane is too big, but we know this is 30 by 20. We like that size. So everything has to fit inside proportionately. So it doesn't matter. I never look at this and say, oh, the plane should be five inches. The plane should be whatever size it needs to be that fits in this thing that looks good. If I already sized one thing, everything gets resized according to that one thing, which in this case is the big rectangle that is kind of my space in the back on the wall. So here's my plane. If you want it facing the other way, the easiest way to do it is go to flip and flip horizontal and it's gonna be facing the other way, okay? Um, all right, so you got the clouds down. Let's do the words in Inkscape, okay? Because I think that's the only thing that's left. Um, all right, so let's go into Inkscape. I'm gonna make it bigger. Okay, so your text. You're gonna click on the text um, feature. <laughs> you're gonna draw your text box over here with your mouse and then you're gonna go to your font and pick a font. This particular font 
is Melamar or something like that. So let's go to the M. Um, there it is, Melamar. So I'm gonna type it just like we saw. Oh, this is not a good font to do. Let me tell you why. I downloaded different variations of this font. So in Inkscape, it doesn't, it doesn't work well. You would actually need to do this like in Word or Font Lab Pad. Let me redo this. Hold on, let's do this text box in a different font for one second. Um, okay, so let's say you pick, don't download multiple versions, that's the problem. Okay, so here is my um, text box, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna click on the arrow key. We wanna make this bigger so we can see it, right? So make sure that this piece is locked. So I'm gonna lock it so that when I pull it bigger, it gets wider and higher at the same proportion. So here is the sky's the limit. What you wanna do to get the offset is, this is currently selected, right? What you wanna do, is I'm gonna move it over for a second just so that we could see it right there. Okay, click in the empty space because we don't want anything highlighted right now. Okay, so you see that box is gone. Nothing is highlighted in this picture. Go and click on the paint bucket. Click on any color, it doesn't matter. We'll fix it in design space, okay? So this is the trick. We're gonna grow by whatever amount, right? Um, if you want like a cleaner look, you don't want your offset to be so big. If you're doing three layers, you wanna do maybe 10 and 20. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So here, we're gonna grow by 10, okay? Then what you do is you go and you click in the thickest part of each letter, okay? So the is all connected, right? So I'm gonna click in the H right here and it highlighted the whole thing. Now, um, I think sky is not all connected because there's a little gap right here. So you're gonna have to do the S and the K. The K was connected to the Y, so that's fine. You wanna do the apostrophe, do your S on the the. Okay, I'm gonna try something right now. I'm gonna click the in the thinnest part, the, the E right here. And it's struggling to do the offset. I'm gonna do it in the H, in the thick part of the H right here, and the whole thing works. So I always try to find like, where's the thickest part of this? And it looks like limits all connected. I'm gonna do the M. See the whole thing got an offset and then do the heart. Okay, so now click on the arrow and see how this is selected. We wanna click in the white space again so nothing is selected. Click on the paint bucket, another color, and now we're gonna grow it by even more. We want that third layer, so I'm gonna do it by 20. And this time it's gonna be easy because the is already connected. I'm gonna click right in the middle, right in the middle. Don't worry about that hole right there. We'll fix it in uh, design space. There, that was really, really fast, right? Grab your, click on your arrow key and you want to grab everything right now. So grab your mouse and grab the whole thing. Go to path, object to path, file, save as. So we're gonna save it as, um, the sky's the limit, offset. Okay, we're gonna go into ink, um, design space. You're gonna upload it. So click upload, upload image, browse. We have to find what we just saved it as, right? So I saved it on my desktop and I saved it as the sky's the limit. Um, and it's this one. Okay, so this is good. Click save. We're gonna click on the image and insert, and now we're gonna clean it up. So, we, and we also need to resize it, right? Resize it to our 20 by 30. So where is it? It's dropping in. All right, here we go. It's right here. And I'm gonna make it bigger just so that we can see it. Okay, we wanna ungroup it. Okay, here we go. 
So our blue is our back layer, right? Our third layer. There's little cuts in it. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna zoom in for a second so you can see it a little bit better. These little holes, I would just go to contour and hide it all. I don't wanna cut any of those little things. No one's gonna notice it. It's just gonna cause a rip in your paper um, and possibly make you recut it. So I'm not really down with that. <laughs> all right, so here's our pink layer. I would do the same with this one, go to contour. Now contour on this one, so let's click on the 100% because I want you to see some things. I want to get rid of these small ones, but not necessarily these big ones because I feel like those are big enough that it makes a difference. So you can either click on here or you can find the little pieces. I think that one's this one. They just look smaller. You can kind of tell. Okay, so here's the, and I'm going to arrange, send it to the front so I can just see it better what it looks like. And then here's the black. You can see it's all grouped together right now, so we wanna ungroup it, but you need to weld each one individually, okay? And I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna change this color to something that we can see a little bit better. So it's gonna be light gray. Do you see, this is us not welding it, right? I'm gonna bring this H to the front because I'm gonna show you what it looks like on your cut mat that H is gonna cut out fully. So in your T, you're gonna have this cut as well as this line coming into your E. You don't want that. So how you get rid of it is you grab the whole word and you weld it. And now the is one fluid word and it's gonna cut just like this. So it's gonna look like it should, okay? So you have to remember to weld it. All right, I'm only gonna do this one word because everything else is gonna be the same. So go to contour to get rid of any circles, any holes that you don't want. And then now let's grab this. And I like to align it, grab all three and align center. This is how it's supposed to look. And then I group it. And the reason why I group it is the same thing, same reason why I group this, the clouds is because when I go to resize this, I want all three layers to look the same size, right? So this is a little bit big for my frame and I'm gonna zoom out because it gives me a better perspective on what it should look like. So the maybe should be like this size. All right, that's all there is to it. At the end, what you wanna make sure you do is you're gonna end up deleting this because otherwise it's gonna think that you need to slice or cut this, this image. So we don't need that. That was all just for us to um, have a visual and also to resize everything. All right, I hope that was helpful. I know that was more of just like a, a working session. It's not necessarily, I, I mean, no one else is gonna have this specific project, but um, similar to these things, this is how you would go about working around it. All right, so comments, questions, please post it. I wanna know if this was helpful, if you wanna see more things like this. Um, I tend to have projects that I feel like other people want to do this one is very specific so i don't expect anyone else to have this project um unlike my Minnie mouse or jasmine in the back or snow white um anyway so yeah please let me know how you feel about it if you have comments or questions please please post it so i know and then if you have a special request like this i would love to help you out so i would record the tutorial and then you have to go step by step watch me and recreate it so i think it's a great learning experience all right my email is Anne at the useless crafter. That's a n at the useless crafter .com. That's after you post your comments and then tell me more about your special request. <laughs> All right. Have a good night guys. Bye.